Listen, I've read plenty of shonen, okay? I know there's about like 60 other ones that I haven't even considered to witness, and some of those are actually very popular. But can you blame me when every time I open a new gen manga, I see a goofy looking 16 year old teenage virgin with literally nothing going for them? Of course not, because why would I read new gens when you can read some of the old classics? Oh, but all the old classics are the same, they're just generic and boring. Well, I'd like to introduce you to an old gen shonen that isn't generic and that was once extremely popular and that is now cursed with the tragic status of hiatus. D Grey Man. No, I didn't say the game, man. I said D Gray Man. Over a year ago, I made a pretty shitty video on this series, which kind of explained why it was my favorite shonen series at the time. And yes, even now, it is still my favorite shonen series. Now, before you get all defensive because I didn't say One Piece, let me give you a little bit of a background on this series because it's a little different from a lot of other shonen series, and it's probably the biggest reason why you haven't heard of it yet. The Green Man was originally a manga that was published by Weekly Shonen Jump, and it became quite popular as it aired alongside Naruto, Bleach, and obviously One Piece. Unfortunately, the author fell ill, which is the main reason for the current hiatus, and it was pretty much forced to withdraw from the Weekly Shonen Jump because, well, it's weekly. So in other words, the Grey Man slowly fell into the tragic hole of hiatus, and it still has yet to climb out of it. Now it's barely publishing four chapters a year. Like, that's competing with some seinen series like Berserk. There were some points where the manga was fully put on hiatus like Vagabond is right now, but slowly the story progressed and now we're nearing some sort of climax. I say nearing, but there's probably going to be a couple more decades at this rate. Now one of the benefits of the hiatus was of course that the art continued to improve. It went from looking like your generic 90s shonen series, even though it wasn't published in the 90s, to looking like straight up artwork out of a seinen series that takes a lot of time and publishes like bi-monthly chapters. I have to give credit where credit is due because a lot of these weekly shonen jump series don't take the time to put in quality into their chapters. Take a look at currently airing shonen series like Chainsaw Man, Hajime no Ippo even. I'm not saying there isn't quality in the chapters, but a lot of the time it's filler content the artwork could be a little better, and the chapters are very short. The Grey Mat is nothing like that. A lot of time is taken into each panel into expressing the moments and the emotions of the characters, and of course the chapters when they do infrequently come out are extremely in-depth and long. Now an interesting thing is, there was an anime in 2006 which actually got a sequel in 2016, so the anime is almost caught up to the manga. Except the anime is completely dog shit compared to the manga. I would highly recommend the manga over the anime as I would with pretty much any other series, but especially with The Grey Man, because while the anime isn't bad, it does not compare to the manga, especially because the original anime series is very old, the animation style is very old, and even the new 2016 anime is nothing compared to the manga in my opinion. You can watch it, but it's just not that good. And unfortunately, due to the manga's current hiatus, and I guess somewhat the popularity of it compared to what it used to be, I don't really see another anime for the Grey Man, even though it desperately needs one because this anime needs to go mainstream because of how insanely good it is, and especially how it appeals to pretty much every audience. When you look at a shonen series, it typically only really works for people of a specific age, people who like a specific genre, and when you look at seinen, it's a similar story. The Grey Man is one of those stories that works for literally everyone. It's extremely dark in certain parts, but it's also extremely happy, comedic, and just wholesome in other parts as well. If you could list a manga as both shonen and seinen, I think The Grey Man would be one of those. Now, the manga itself hasn't even reached its end. In fact, it's nowhere near its end. Which begs the question, if we're getting four chapters a month, is this manga even going to end? And that's a very good question. As with a lot of hiatus manga, we question whether it's going to end or not, but even if it doesn't, The Grey Man will still, in my mind, go down as one of the best shonen because of how absolutely ridiculous things get. So now, what is this manga about? Why is it such a special series and why can't I stop talking about it? So I was wondering the same thing when I read the first 90 or so chapters because it seemed as generic as it gets. The story is extremely simple and it pretty much follows your typical shonen main characters. You have the nice guy MC, you have the cute main chick, you have the hot-headed rival and the laid-back cool kid. Except it isn't just that. 
You see, from the beginning, this show sets a dark theme. Essentially, these demons called Akuma, which is actually demon in Japanese, take over people's bodies by killing them and eat the souls of the humans they killed. Now, it's seemingly a simple power system, except it actually turns out to be one of the most genius concepts I've seen for a power system. And it absolutely blew me away when I read the first chapter again recently and came to the realization that this series has an absolutely genius power system. Z Gray Man calls back to Christianity, and like a lot of series, it implements its teachings and some of the things from the Bible. Now, when I talk about Christianity, I get absolutely crucified, ha ha ha, for the things that I say. In one video, I accidentally said Abel killed Cain, and everybody in the comments went after me, even though I clearly said in the video that I got it wrong. Anyways, you can tie back Christianity to the case of the Akuma, where they're kind of made up of three things, a machine, a soul, and a tragedy. The key thing there is the tragedy. A human becomes an Akuma when the tragedy and the darkness of their life becomes so dark that they literally cannot overcome it. What happens as a result of the overwhelming tragedy is the appearance of this character or this persona that is portrayed as the devil in this story kind of, and that spirit is known as the Millennium Earl. This guy, or whatever it is, is basically the main antagonist of the series. Now you might be asking, how the fuck is this thing an antagonist when it's literally like a fat clown with the ugliest smile you can ever imagine? Good question. You're gonna have to read The Grey Man to find out because the Millennium Earl ends up being one of the craziest and most unique antagonists I have seen. I'm genuinely flabbergasted at the way this antagonist is written and the way it connects to all the characters, similar to how the devil connects to all people, if you really think about it and based on Christianity. Well, I'm probably gonna get fucked up in the comments, but whatever. Think about what the devil represents. Sin, despair, hatred, tragedy, all pretty prominent topics in a lot of manga series. But when you're at your lowest point in life, aren't these the thoughts that haunt you? After you encounter tragedy, who do you blame for it? God. And who opposes God? The devil, which is in the Green Man is the Millennium Earl as I mentioned. Now the person who experienced the tragedy essentially switches from believing in God to becoming the puppet of the devil because they weren't strong enough to overcome the tragedy so they blame God, they hate God for what happened to them and so they side with the devil and the devil kind of like convinces them to join their side. This isn't just a fictional power system, it's completely real. Now I'm talking about like serious tragedy to the point where you're literally losing your own sanity. Like in the first chapter, this dude loses his wife or whatever, and he just goes completely insane and becomes an Akuma. Now the reason he becomes an Akuma in more detail is because the Millennium Royal makes a deal, like the devil makes a deal with the person and so they get the power in exchange for their soul and they become an Akuma. It's a pretty interesting concept. I really like what they did here with the realistic aspect of becoming a puppet of the devil, which is pretty prominent in daily life. We just don't see it because there's a lot more darkness in humans than we really know. Anyways, now that we know that, the main antagonists of this story are the puppets of the devil, which is pretty interesting. Now, who do you think would be the protagonists if the antagonists are the puppets of the devil? Not so shockingly, the puppets of the god, the Exorcist. So you can kind of see here, it's a battle between good and evil, but it's hard to really tell who is good and who is evil. Because is God really good for bringing upon people all of this tragedy and actually turning them into Akuma in the first place? Pretty deep when you get into it. If you don't think at this point that the Grey Man isn't deep for one chapter of a shonen series, let's get a little bit deeper. So, Alan Walker. No, not the music artist. Alan Walker, the protagonist of the Grey Man. I've made a video on him entirely and I don't blame you for not watching the video because it was absolute dog shit, but he seems like a generic MC at the beginning of the story. But what Degree Man does, unlike its fellow Jump counterparts, is hide a huge, and I mean huge, part of Alan Walker's story. It's not like, oh, we have a backstory for X character, like we don't know too much about Luffy in One Piece, we get a backstory of him and whatever, no. Alan Walker's backstory is like, it's insane. He's introduced as like a 15 year old teenager, but as those who've read Degree Man know, he has so much backstory to him that you even question his age. His progression from being a cheerful character to realizing his fate and the pressure of not giving in to the devil, trying to overcome the difficulty that is unfortunately upon him, resembles how we must follow God and continue to push forward regardless of adversity, be grateful for adversity, and believe in God as God believes in us. I can confidently say he's one of a kind in terms of his growth as a character, and it's almost like he isn't even the main character at some point in the story, and that's not what you think it is unless you've read the story. So don't go commenting about spoilers this, spoilers that, because you have no fucking idea what the story will do to your mind. Okay, so I've talked about the main character and the general story. I say general because this shit gets deeper than probably any shonen I've ever read, as I've already 
already said. You can say it's generic in certain aspects. It definitely is because the first hundred chapters or so follows a common path taken by Shonen around his time. It's like the main characters, this, this comedy all over the place. I want to protect my friends and all that bullshit. But what's special about Degree Man is what comes after the Noah's Ark arc, which is, by the way, a great arc, is just absolutely nothing compared to the later ones. It is really good. It's action packed. But oh my God, the amount of depth that you encounter once you finish Noah's Ark, arc is fucking wild. When you reach the 200s, assuming you reach it, I doubt this manga doesn't end up as one of your favorite shonen and possibly even one of your favorite manga. Not only that, it contains a backstory that I may call the best backstory I've ever seen. Like, okay, look, it's close, but it's obviously not like Berserk's Golden Age type backstory. You know what I'm saying? That's one of a kind. Now, one thing common to the entire series is the consistent comedic relief, even in moments that don't really require much comedic relief. Now, I'm not a big fan of comedy in a lot of series, I think it's, I think it has its place, like in AOT, there's some pretty good comedy in certain places, and it helps like Puck's comedy in Berserk kind of lightens the mood, but Degree Man is like every two seconds, there's like comedy, some dude could be hanging off a cliff and they're trying to save him, and they'll just be screaming about how their hand is being squished by the other person or some dumb bullshit like that. It can get annoying, but there's other times where you're gonna be thankful that it's there because of how depressing the recent mindfuck made you. But it's okay because another mindfuck is probably right around the corner. The amount of plot twists in this show. Like everything I've said already in the video is important, but the plot twists themselves have their own place. It's unbelievable. Like you think Attack on Titan has crazy twists, right? Nothing. Trust me, you get to a specific point in the Gray Man, you will see what I'm talking about. It's like Urasawa and Iseyama somehow had a kid and they casually threw in Takahiko Inoue's level of paneling and emotional expression. How the fuck, like, how is that even possible? A while back, I made a plot twist video and I put Degree Man's one of the chapters, I'm not going to say which one, at number one because I believe it truly deserved it and a lot of people in the comments agreed with me. And if you thought AOT was bazonkers, you'll need a change of underwear after pretty much every chapter past 200 in Degree Man because I can't explain it to you unless you've read the series, but my god, there's just no words without spoiler. It gets to a point where every chapter, every single one is mind boggling. Even the two recent chapters that have come out in like the last year have been unbelievable monumental chapters of the year in my opinion everybody's out there dying over the new one piece chapters which are incredible to be fair but degree man is out here dropping aot season 4 twists every chapter it's so crazy because everything can be looked at as generic and relatively basic but the mangaka katsura hoshino methodically places little points that you skip over but mean a whole lot later on it's the usual characteristic of foreshadowing but it's so much better there's just something special about the way Degree Man does it. It's right in your face. The words are in your face, but you skip over it. Things that highlight Alan, the Millennium Earl, things between those two, and like, oh my god. I almost got into spoilers, but Jesus Christ, it gets so deep. The current state of the manga is quarterly, as I probably said at the beginning of the video, which means it drops new chapters every three months roughly. But obviously with hiatus, as you know, that tends to get stretched a little bit. But again, with hiatus comes really, really good quality of manga chapters. I mean, where you get one chapter a year, but with the quality Degree Man gives, it's 100% worth it. Even now, Degree Man remains one of the best shonen in my eyes, one of the best ongoing shonen, even with the craziness of One Piece right now. A story that starts off as a generic shonen with loads of comedic moments and a typical cast of cool characters turns into a deeply philosophical tale about struggle and embracing the ways of God when going up against tragedy and cruel fate. The villains of this story are also top tier, as one of them happens to be my profile picture and has been for the last year. You'll probably see who that is if you check it out. Now while this manga has been forgotten by many, it is a masterpiece to say the least. It's a little slow at first, but when things pick up, you'll probably need to take breaks while reading unless you want your brain to disintegrate. Trust me, read Degree Man and you won't regret it. Also subscribe to my channel and watch more of my videos, you also won't regret that. Shame, no shame.